Hi, Melody. Hi, Stephanie. Hi. Hi. How are you both doing today? Great. Thanks. Fantastic. It's a beautiful fall day. Love it. I I'm very envious. Where in the world are you, Melody? I'm curious. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix, <laughs> so, Arizona. Fall. <laughs> well, sure. Yeah. I've, I have a I, I have a this kind of fall too. I'm in San Francisco, and oh, sure. We've gotten some rain, uh, which is I've been promising my outdoor plants for uh, a couple of months now that they would be getting some water any day, and it finally it has come to fruition. So that's fall for us in San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What about you, Stephanie? Where are you? I'm in Canada, so I'm living both your dreams right now. <laughs> <laughs> Autumn leaves. And... Tell me about the colors. Yeah, layers. <laughs> I hear there's colors, but yeah. I don't believe it. Chunky sweaters, Stephanie. Yeah, yeah. Do you get to wear it's chunky dark. sweaters? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, my name is Ashley with the Discover team here at Teachable. I'm very excited to have Melody and Stephanie with us today. Um, we are going to be talking about something that I have been very curious about as a social media consumer um, because it's fascinating to me how many people are taking exquisite photos of food and sharing them in a way that makes me think I ha, ha, wh how what <laughs> how are people do, how are people mm -hmm. so good at this and how how could I uh, share something that looks uh, even remotely as lovely as this and it turns out Melody and Stephanie are the people to learn these skills from. So we are going to be chatting today uh, about how to, not just the photography, like the food photography part of this question, but also how to turn that into a business. So if you are one of these people that I stalk on social media because you take excellent photos of food, uh, but you haven't quite figured out how to turn that into a business, uh, this is, this is, for you. And we have, I believe, uh, some deep history here. So Melody, you start, you started with just as a kind of hobbyist photographer, right? So you hadn't kind of uh, decided that that food was your jam yet. No pun intended. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that pun. <laughs> That's my favorite one I've heard. Yeah, I I was, you know, dabbling in the whole portrait photography realm. Mm -hmm. Um when my when my boys, whenever I had my first son, I was a I was actually a second grade teacher. And so I always did photography around the holidays, and that was how we earned our Christmas money um yeah. for to be able to buy Christmas presents for for everybody. So um I, but it so that's what I did for a couple of years. And then 2016, so Stephanie, can you believe how many years have gone by now? Um, mm -hmm. It has, I accidentally fell, it like literally fell into this world and of photography for bloggers. And I tried to start a blog. I even did that. Like I was, I was, I tried to do everything. So <laughs> I didn't love writing the blogs and, you know, creating the content, but I loved cooking and I love photographing the recipes. So I leave the blogging to Stephanie and Stephanie leaves the blog or the photography to me. So <laughs> that's kind of how, how it worked. But um, yeah, I met her yeah. in 2016. We started working together and I guess the rest is history. history. So I won't, I won't say share too much because I know Stephanie's going to go into a little bit of this. Well, and yeah, we, we will definitely uh, let you all have the stage here, but I, and I know just, as our audience is is kind of filtering in, let us know where you're where you're tuning in from, and what your interest is in this particular event. Are you currently a hobbyist photographer who's thinking about how to how to turn that into a business, or are you somebody on Stephanie's side of things where you maybe have have built a blog and are creating either written content or different types of content that you want to be able to enhance mm -hmm. with, with some really beautiful photography. Um, and that, so that's Stephanie, you, you had been a, a, like a, a fully fledged, fully formed blogger uh, prior to starting, starting this work with Melody, right? You, I mean, I know yes. you've, you've, uh, 
you've been on the scene as far as <laughs> yeah. blogs well, go. I, I've been blogging for 11 years, which makes me um, practically OG? a dinosaur. OG. <laughs> yeah. She's an OG blogger, yeah, I would say. Yeah. Blogger. Um, that. But it's changed so much. Like, I mean, Pinterest wasn't invented when I started blogging. Like, it's, it's I mean, I think like Facebook was like as it is like months old, like it's just so different, right? Mm -hmm. No Instagram. Um, and so what we have found is also uh, like, it's not just people who um, maybe are interested in having their own blogs, but people who started blogs and love like the photography and the creativity part of it. Mm -hmm. But that is such a small portion of what making money through blogging is in 2021. Like, you know, it's about 10% of the work and the other 90% of the work is getting eyeballs to the blog so you can right. make money from it. So we have had a ton of people come to us who just love creating, but don't like all the other things that come with all them, that other right? stuff. <laughs> and so um, it's what we're going to talk about in terms of growing a business through working for bloggers like myself. And there's thousands of people like me um, is that um, it allows you to kind of filter out all those things that you hate about blogging if, if you're doing it and focus in on like the creativity of it and mm. and really the like you know kind of the fun stuff for me it's not the fun stuff <laughs> but, <laughs> but like if you're more creative and, and that right, right. definitely a very fulfilling way to like be in the community but not have all the other things that go along with blogging mm -hmm. so it's Terrific because it is, as as you say, this evolving landscape yeah. and so many people maybe who are either thinking about, you know, dipping a toe in or have already done that and want to get a bit more serious. It can be intimidating and cause some friction to think about yes. how to like, oh, how do I stay on top of whatever the latest yeah. marketing or audience building uh, requirements are. Yeah. So I'm, I'm grateful to have you all with us today. Just to let our audience know, we will have a replay of this event available. So for everyone who's registered, <clears throat> excuse me, you'll you'll get uh, you'll get a link to this event. So you, if you happen to miss any of the wisdom that you hear from Melody and Stephanie today, don't fret, you'll be able to access that after the session is over. Uh, I also will be in the comments. So if you have any questions, if there's anything that you want to chat about, specifically related to your journey, you know, we can throw those into the comments and yeah. we'll make sure we save some time uh, to, to chat with Melody and Stephanie about those specific things that are, uh, that are coming up for you. Mm -hmm. So without any further ado, I will turn it over to you, my friends, and bring up this beautiful uh, hunger-inducing or salivation-inducing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, do we have it live? Perfect. There we go. Okay. Awesome. Well, again, we're so excited that that you're here today. We're excited to talk with all of you. So, as she said, you can go ahead and put your comments in the sec in the comments section. Questions in the comments section as we go through this, because uh, we want to make sure we get to everybody's questions. But as I introduce myself a little bit already, I but I'll I'll say it again. I'm Melody. I am a wife. I am a mom to two boys, and I am a school teacher turned food photographer. And I met Stephanie back in 2016 and on Facebook actually, and started working for her. And I guess the rest is history. I, I, I guess like, yeah. I don't know if that's a good way to say it, but it has been amazing what, what we've been able to accomplish together. And Stephanie is going to tell you about that. Yeah. Um, so my name is Stephanie and I, um, I've been, as I said, a professional blogger for um, 11 years now. And my site is called Spaceships and Laser Beams. Um, it's primarily a food and entertaining blog. And I'm also Melody's co-founder mm -hmm. of our course here on Teachable called Pretty Focused. And we talked a little bit about the background, but just so people can understand the bigger picture, um, we've been working 
the math is, I just had to do it in my head in a panic five years <laughs> when we met. I was, I was going to call myself an overwhelmed blogger. So I was juggling a million things at once and um, dropping lots of balls and Melody kind of swooped in and picked up the ones related to photography. And together over the last five years, we've been perfecting a photography strategy that would get more readers to the blog. So People often ask how bloggers get paid. It's eyeballs on the blog. And in fact, the work we've done together on spaceships and laser beams has allowed us to grow so much that um, our content is seen by about 100 million people a month across all social channels plus the blog. Um, one of the cool things that's happened over the last five years is that other bloggers began to notice our growth and then on the other side, other women began to notice what a, I will put words in Melody's mouth, cool <laughs> job that she had. Mm -hmm. And we realized there was a desperate need to pair the two. And that's bloggers who need trained photographers and people who wanted to work from home in a creative field like photography. And that's how Pretty Focus was born. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so today you're going to learn the camera and supplies you'll need for food blog photography, where and how to set up a small studio in your home, um, the types of jobs that are immediately available after you graduate, and how we can help you get a lucrative food photography business. So let's start first with the camera and supplies. Um, a, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to try not to rabbit trail. I'm trying to stay on track this time. So let's talk about let's talk about this camera gear. Now, one thing I want to make sure to to stress is that this is a this is a business. Um, this is a legitimate business. And um, so with that might come a little bit of an investment. Some of you, if you've already dabbled in photography, you're you already have a lot of this gear. Others, if you are new and you're like, I'm doing it, I'm jumping all in, you're going to need you're going to need most of this, if not all of it. So let's talk specifically about the camera gear. So I use a Canon 5D Mark III and I use a Mark IV. Um, my two favorite go-to lenses are the Canon 51.2 and the Can Canon 102.8. Now, obviously I'm a Canon shooter, so I love the Canon, uh, Canon products. So um, it's really important to have really, really good lenses for this. Um, but I also want to say like, you might go to other photography, your food photography courses, and they recommend, you know, four lenses or five lenses. I like to keep things simple and approachable. And so I really stick to those two main lenses. Um, I use an Expo disc, which I'll share about in just a little bit. Um, the Expo disc helps set a custom white balance. Um, obviously, SD cards, right? We need to have, I have piles of these sitting in front of me. You guys can't, you guys can't see, I pushed them all out of the way. Um, a tripod and we recommend um, Lightroom software for editing. So that's really the camera gear that that you need. Now, because you are photographing food, we need more than just gear. We need styling supplies. Now, this, this I feel like is the area that can be the most overwhelming because there is just so so much available and you go anywhere and you can buy anything and everything and where do you put it and and i so I, again like to keep things really simple um so i would suggest starting with neutral plates and bowls brushed silverware because you don't want to see your reflection um i love different types of linens cotton polyester blends are best wooden serving spoons neutral and neutral baking dishes and neutral mixing bowls and the reason for the neutral is i I don't have anything against color. I actually have a pink styling board right behind me. But whenever you are starting out, having something neutral is is best because number one, you're still learning your style, okay? And as you learn your style and what what makes you happy and what makes your clients happy, then you'll be able to buy to um, to fit those needs. We also suggest neutral because of the type of ph photography we're doing um, is teaching, we're showing people how to make these 
we're showing people how to make these recipes. And if they're made in dishes that are not easily recognizable or they're not dishes that the everyday household um, has, that recipe, um, I guess, Stephanie, it, get, it can be intimidating, right? We're like, yeah. oh, I don't have that dish, so I can't make that recipe. Um, or I even, so yesterday I made, this is this is a side a side note, but I made these bourbon pecan chocolate chip cookies with a bourbon vanilla. Bourbon vanilla is not something everybody has in their house, <laughs> right? So you hear that title and you're like, oh, well, I can't make that recipe because I don't have the bourbon. Well, you can just sub it out for regular vanilla if you need to. But the same the same applies for, for the styling products. If you don't have the 9 by 13 pan, they're going to think that they can't make it. And we, Stephanie and I have seen that a couple of, yes. a couple of times. So um, now let's talk about the home studio setup. So we got our gear, we got our styling supplies. How do we start photographing? And I use a portable table. I actually have a table right behind me. I got from Ikea. I think the whole thing with the legs is $25. I love Ikea. Um, I use styling boards. I started out, you can see on the board in the photo, I started out with uh, just a roll up vinyl styling board that looks like marble. So again, I suggest going with more neutral tones, not doing pinks and yellows and, and browns and crazy colors until you have established your style. Um, I use reflectors, poster boards. I have a step stool. Um, I use stands to prop up the reflectors and then I shoot natural with natural light. So that's what we teach inside of pretty focus. That's what I use is, um, is natural light. So as long as you have a natural light source, you should be good, which I think that's everybody. So going through this, this, uh, whole list of gear, um, a question that we often get asked is they want to know if the camera that they have, is that going to work for them? Is the gear that I have now going to be good enough? And I just want to preface this to say that a full frame camera is always going to be better. Um, but that doesn't mean a budget camera like a Canon Rebel or, you know, the Nikon equivalent won't be good enough because that's absolutely where I started. There might come a day where you're going to want to upgrade, but we're talking about your starting starting point. And so I think it's so important to learn how to use the gear that you have now. Okay. So Stephanie and I preach this all the time is that you, you don't have to go out and spend gobs of money on stuff. You can start with what you have now. And I think that ring rings true so much for Stephanie and I, because that's what we experienced whenever we were starting out. We just, we've built, we've gotten to where we have because we, we just use the tools that we have now. And so let's talk about using the gear you have now. I have these photos and I want to show you the difference. See if you can point this out. One was taken on the budget setup, an $800 camera and a kit lens. And the one on the right was taken with a full frame camera and a, a really expensive lens. So the difference between those photos, several thousand dollars, a couple thousand dollars. But one thing that is, so while everything was different, the, the gear and the lenses, the thing that was the same, the common denominator was the light. And so I'm going to give you two tips of how you can take better photos with the gear that you have now. Okay. So I'm going to, oh, you are on that. Okay. I'm following along on my side. So anyway, okay. Um, let's talk about these two tips. So number one, Light is foundational. Like I said, the light was the common denominator. I was set up on my table right here. And all I did was swap out my gear. My light was the same. So how do we capitalize on the light? And how do we make sure we have good light? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're, it's how we set up our table is really important. So as you see behind me and you see in these photos, I actually set my board parallel to either a south facing window. That one is the best option. This is a west facing window and it's obviously better in the afternoons. The south facing window gives you more light 
for longer all throughout the day. So you have a longer shooting time. Now, I like to set a light trap basically, um, with a reflector opposite of the window and then at the back of the board. So you can see that in photo number two. Okay. Um, and that's keeping all of the light that's coming in the window trapped on, on my board because I want to keep the brightest light right there. I want that to flood into my camera. And then number three is if I have direct light shining on my board, because sometimes whenever it, I'm shooting at my south facing window or here my west facing window in the afternoon, I'll have that direct light coming into my window. I will use a diffuser. So instead of having a harsh direct light, I have a soft light that floods um, onto my board. So that is how I set up. Now take a look at some of my friends setups. Okay, so these, um, these students, I love that they use what they had. Our favorite photo will always be the dog kennel because I just think, and, and these women who have these photos here are doing so well with their businesses now. And this is where they started. And some of them have been able to upgrade their, their, their setup might look very different today, but this is where they started. I love and, that making it work, right? Like, with yes. What they have. Just yeah. 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 Yep. I think that we forget that. I think we have to be like, oh, I have to have arrived and I have to have all of the things when really it's just, you just have to start. You just have to do it. So the second, my second tip um, is, and I talked about this before, is to use an expo disc. Now these, these cameras are so smart. Their, their digital cameras are so smart and they're getting smarter and smarter, especially, especially like with the mirrorless cameras coming out. It's amazing. The, the thing that they still need a little help on is setting a custom white balance. White balance is the balance of colors in the photo. And sometimes depending on the lighting, it can be hard to determine what white looks like in every lighting um, situation. And so this expo disc helps your camera to be able to, it tells, it helps tell your camera what white is supposed to look like in that lighting setting. So you can see the example of without an expo disc, it looks blue and dull. And if you've been shooting, if you've, if you um, have been dabbling in photography for a little bit and you're, you take, you take photos and they're a little blue, maybe a little dark, the colors are dull. Well, that is white balance. And whenever you tell the camera what it needs to know, you'll see what happens. The colors are vibrant because we know that the cones are actually a beautiful golden color, right? They're not gray. They're a beautiful golden color. And so whenever we're able to balance the colors that will make a huge difference. And by the way, that is not, there's no editing done to those photos that is straight off of the camera and that's how it should be. And you can do that with the gear that you have now, as long as you have a good light and you're using an expo disc. So all of that is easy. It's easy to write a list. It's easy to get the gear that you need, but let's talk about the opportunities and what it looks like to work for bloggers. Um, yeah, so I really hope that anyone watching this is thinking that it sounds amazing, but how do I turn this into a business? And what we wanted to do was spend more, a little more time diving into this part. So um, I was saying earlier, it's hard for people to understand that bloggers make money. So um, it's really under, hard to understand how someone working for a blogger might make money. And um, so what I wanted to do was upfront kind of put the numbers out there so people could understand um, what we were talking about. So about a month ago, um, we did an updated survey of our graduates for 2021. And we asked them several questions. And I think um, one of the most important from this survey was the income data that we received. First that we found, there was about a 60-40 split where about 60% of our grads said they were working full-time. The other 40-ish percent said they were working part-time. Um, the other really interesting factor is that for the part-time people, um, I think it, it says like 
almost 60% of them were making more than $10,000 in additional income and over 35% of them were making over 25,000 for part-time work. On the full-time side, side, I think it really blew us away. Um, you know, oh, almost 60%, so about 57% um, are full-time grads. And of those, 50% of them were making more than 50,000 a year for full-time work. And then if you look on the pie chart here, 13.6% um, of them were making over 100,000 a year um, doing this full-time. And what we wanted to do was break down how the job, whether you're part-time or full-time, typically looks. And so we kind of put this work into two buckets. The first is, um, people who are working for bloggers and websites to take photos of existing content. Now, the second is that they're creating new recipes or crafts that are then sold to blogs and websites. And over the next couple of slides, I wanted to show you how that works. Oh, actually, there's one more thing. And that's, um, we also found that people were taking their, um, skills that they have learned in food photography and uh, and doing so many other things with it. And these are just a few examples of shooting menus and cookbooks, doing product shots, or working for publications. And now I'm actually going to talk about um, the, the kind of the examples of how people are working their business. So the first slide is um, Redonda, and she was a medical transcriptionist and a hobby photographer, and now she creates content in her home full time. And Redonda is a great example of someone who falls into that first bucket we talked about, and that's someone who doesn't create her own recipes. She's provided them by her clients, and her job is to photograph them in a way that would inspire readers. So Redonda works for a couple of bloggers. She works for a meal planning service and a magazine. And here's what that works like, work, work looks like. So the first is um, the blogger work. Now this is actually um, a photo from my blog, which was highly embarrassing to put up, but the photo on the left was the original photo. And the photo on the right is the one that uh, Redonda created when she remade the recipe and re-photographed it. And it really brought the recipe to life. And for a blogger that helps with traffic and income and makes this kind of job um, a no-brainer for us to hire out. The other thing um, that I said Redonda does is with magazines and uh, with meal plans. And with these clients, she is usually provided a recipe done by a recipe developer or a food stylist. And her job is to take these never seen before recipes and bring them to life. Now that second bucket example is someone like Ivy. Um, Ivy is a former nurse and um, nurse turned wedding photographer turned full-time food photographer. And um, she creates recipes and sell them. And she's actually got a small team who help her do things like photo editing, washing dishes and recipe development. So her plans are to continue to expand over time. And Ivy's in that 13.6% that are earning over a hundred thousand a year from this. It's really truly a business and a full-time job for her. And, and she's made an investment in it and, and built her life around this business. And how her, her job works is that all week Ivy and her team, um, they, they are creating recipes and photographing them. And then, um, every, at the end of the week, so I believe it's, either Friday or Saturday morning, she sends an email list to her shop, which is, here's an example of a page. Um, and then within minutes, the people on her list buy um, the recipes that are on her site. And she's seen a lot of success and growth using this business structure. Um, but what I wanted to show was the two differences because really there's no one size fits all approach. You can make either work for you on your own time in your own home. And I think if you're really interested in doing this, you might be asking some questions right now, but I don't have experience. Is that okay? 
I don't know any bloggers. Will I ever be able to find clients? And will I really be able to make this work? And we want to say that the answer is absolutely yes. And the reason why we know um, it's yes is because uh, of our course and the system that we've developed that's working time and time again here on Teachable for, for people just like you. And our course is called Pre-Focused and it has three parts. The first part is training. And, and that's the education component that we've really developed to an industry leading standard. The second is coaching, which includes one-on-one -on -one coaching in a group environment and a, like a really in-depth portfolio review process. And the third part is um, that we have a buyer's club, which is filled with clients. You get in there once you graduate and they're waiting and ready for, um, people just like you to hire. And so what we wanted to do was dive a little further into these and talk about um, what's involved and how long it would be before you could um, earn your return on your investment. So can I hand this part over to you? Because this is- Yes, style. yeah, sorry, I muted myself. <laughs> I was going, but I was muted. So, okay, so let's talk about that first part, the training. Um, so, the pretty focused training system, it's so much more than uh, than a course. I think course is the easy word, but really it's it's if when you look at everything, it's so much more than that. So um, we have six modules. So we start with camera basics. If you don't know how to use a camera, um, number module two is composition and styling. Module three is we we dive into photographing new recipes because remember the the, your photography strategy helps to grow your audience um, or your client's audience. And so we want to make sure that we know how to photograph recipes. We actually teach how um, to do like a tutorial based food photography. So we, we really teach that specific style of photography. Then in module four, we take you into Lightroom, show you how to use Lightroom. Module five, um, we tell you all about working for clients. So the things that Stephanie just talked about with like the recreations and, you know, selling your own recipes and exclusives like, you know, Ivy has set up, we really break that down. And there's even a few more um, ways that you can work for bloggers. And so after this module, you're going to have a really good understanding of the type of services that you want to provide, because you might be listening to this and you might think, write recipes. I don't want to do that. I can't do that. You don't have to do that. And so that's one thing that we want to make sure you understand is you don't have to do that. Um, or, you know, some people come, some people come in and say, like, I don't want to do recreations. I want to do my own thing. I want to make my own recipes. Awesome. That's a wonderful. The thing that you will learn after module five is what your business is going to look like and what services you want to provide. And then module six, we talk about how to set up your business, how to we we show you how to create invoicing systems, how to show um, how to create photo delivery systems. We talk about client questionnaires, pricing contracts. All of that is in module six. So we show you how to do it and we show you how to set up your business. So that part is the training. Now, the coaching. Um, we have a free group, a free Facebook group for coaching. So as you are working your way through the training, each there are four modules that have homework at the end of each mo module. You're going to go through that. You'll post it in the group. Um, as you are photographing recipes and you're practicing, you're going to post that in the group. And we have incredible coaches who are going to come in and give you feedback each day. In fact, we've got an example of what that feedback looks like. So we have the student, they posted their work over here on the left and our coaches um, will give direct feedback and such as, Hey, Sarah, this is so good. I think you did a great job on your white balance and exposure, except for a couple of, um, you know, darker shots looking through your plated heroes. I think you could do a couple more shots where there's more white space on either side. And she, and she goes on with some more specific feedback. And what I love about this is our coaches, um, have been doing this, their experience, they've been doing this for a few years and they see bigger picture and they know the types of photos the clients and the bloggers want. And so 
there is a little bit of learning curve. Even if you're coming in with photography experience, there is a little bit of a learning curve whenever it comes to working for food bloggers specifically. And our coaches help you to see big picture and help coach you. So again, you are you can you can confidently uh, photograph for your clients. So that's what our coaching community um, looks like is um, you're posting um, and then you're you're getting feedback. And here are some things that our people say about our community. Um, the Facebook group really helps you feel like you're in this with friends and mentors. You're not alone, even if you are alone in your kitchen. Um, but equally valuable are the full length videos. So they talk about that. Um, I think you guys are doing an amazing job cheering us on. You're all very positive when you give feedback. Every time I read one of your feedback, I pay attention to how you do it because I want to learn to be encouraging, not um, and helpful. So not just in the group, but in life. And so I love all of these, um, the comments, and we really have such a, a an encouraging and um, an encouraging in, environment inside of our Facebook group. So then the next part, kind of the end part of our portfolio or our coaching, and this is what you need to do in order to graduate is to go through a portfolio review. Okay, so you've gone through the course, you've gone through the material, and as you've gone through it and you're doing coaching, you are, you're posting in the group, right, and you're practicing. And so um, then at the very end, you go through a portfolio review. So let's talk a little bit more about what graduating looks like. So um, one of our students, Melody, not the same Melody, says the portfolio review was one of the things that really sold me on buying the course. I've bought so many other photography courses, spending hundreds and thousands of dollars, and I was always missing one thing, the feedback, especially from the instructor. And at, like as a teacher, I've got a degree in teaching. I could not just I could not just create something and not give students feedback and help them get better. Um, and so we are so passionate about, about our community, our coaching community and about this portfolio review process. So Melody said, she continued to say, I cannot tell you how incredibly value this is, valuable this is to me. So for your portfolio review, we have some prerequisites like completing the course. Um, we ask that you photograph at least 15 recipes. So you're practicing and you're getting feedback from the coaches um, and that you're posting those recipes for feedback. You know, you're not just you're not just doing them and holding them, holding it back for yourself. You're actually posting those in there so our coaches can do what they're paid to do is to coach you through this and to get you through the course faster. So, um, so this, once you pass this, then you are a graduate and you are added into our buyer's club, which I think Stephanie is talking about in a second. So I'm not going to get ahead of myself. Um, <laughs> so along with all of this, we've also included, um, a couple of bonuses. One, we have a preset to make editing even faster. Um, I provide you with full length session walkthroughs so you can, I think there's like four, four videos where you can watch me work. You can listen to me talk. You can watch me make mistakes and see how I recover from them and just go through, go through that whole photo process of how, what it looks like to photograph a recipe. We also have, if you're not sure where to start, because we also get that question of, well, how do I know what recipes to photograph or how do I know what recipes bloggers will even want? We have a list of 100 highly searched recipes for you. And then we also provide um, an expense tracker and a sales post template. We walk you through how to post recipes for sale um, and the expense tracker, it helps you keep track of all of your expenses. Uh, it helps you keep track of your taxes and so on. Cause that's really important whenever you're setting up a business, it's good to know how much money you're spending on things. So anyway, so the last thing though, that Stephanie is going to talk about is our buyer's club. Oh. Sorry. I had <laughs> the dogs barking. Um, so this is definitely the best for last, I think. And this is because this bonus is basically priceless. And that's entry into our buyer's mm -hmm. club once you graduate. And so um, 
in this group, it's only for pretty focused grads. So you have to graduate in order to be able to be admitted into this group that is filled with over 900 bloggers now who um, hire um, photographers to work for them who are, or who are interested in it. And what you can see here on the screen are the types of job requests from bloggers um, that routinely get posted in the group, but also our grads are able to um, post in the Buyers Club if they're available or directly sell their work. Um, and here's one of the most amazing examples, I think, is one of our grads posted um, this meatball bundle and made uh, basically $800. Um, she sold it in three minutes in the Buyers Club. Um, and it's just one of many instances that are happening every day um, there. And it makes it such a great marketplace and such value um, for our grads. And it was one of those things um, that we added over the course of the last five years because what we wanted, we didn't want to have a program where people got out and had to cold pitch or struggle to get clients. We wanted them to get work um, basically immediately upon graduation. And so it was really important for us to create something like this. There's no charge, extra charge. It's included when you um, purchase tier three and when you graduate, you get in. Um, so it's just part of the program. The other thing that we do is that we um, provide uh, listings uh, on our website of all of our grads. So there are transactions happening that we don't even know about that are outside of the Buyers Club where um, bloggers can go directly to our website and hire a photographer. And um, just, I guess, a lot of people ask us why the Buyers Club and why Pretty Focus is so effective. And I think the big thing is that it comes down to trust. We're created, I mean, I'm still actively blogging. Melody and our coaches still work in food photography. And so we've created something that's by the industry for the industry. And um, we've put our full reputations behind the program. And what we've been doing is on, we've been doing on such a high level for quite some time. Um, so bloggers trust that when they hire someone from Pretty Focus, they're getting someone that's trained and ready to go and understands tutorial based food photography and knows the kind of photos that they need in order for them to make money. So it's, it's really been um, a, a great marriage for us and the community to come together and provide this. Now in that survey that we've been talking about, one of the important questions we wanted to ask is how long it took grads to connect with clients once they graduated. And 95% of them said that it took less than a week. And 63% of them said that it took only hours. And I think that is the most amazing thing that we can hear is that there's still so much opportunity. Like this is a brand new survey um, and there's still so much opportunity in the marketplace and a real need to continue to supply photographers. I love this next example um, because it's so genius. And I think <laughs> Melody and I could have never thought that someone would think of this and how genius it is. So this student um, purchased tier three of Pretty Focused and after graduation made her money back in 15 minutes. And how she did it is that the portfolio, which uh, Melody has talked about, she created all her own recipes and photographed them so that when she graduated, she could sell all of the recipes that were in her portfolio. Um, and so, which is just genius that, yeah, genius. You know, yeah. that she was ready to go like the minute she graduated. Um, and so she made, I think as she says, about $1,300 from that. And then the second thing she did is she created a second recipe bundle. So something like that meatball example that I had given you earlier and sold that for $865. So in 45 minutes, she covered her full investment in Pretty Focus. And I, I love that she says she never has to do commercial and real estate photography again. And she's so happy about that. And this was a post unprompted by us that she had left 
in the group because I think she was so thrilled with what was happening and also wanted to inspire others to um, to look at the the whole process in the same way and how they could be mm -hmm. setting themselves up for, for the most success upon graduation. Yeah. It's amazing. So I'm, I love that story. Yeah. Um, I get, I love that story. So, and I love that our students are can just continuing, continually like pushing the limits and pushing the boundaries. And it just continues to raise the bar um, of pretty focused in the community. So what tier is right for you. So what we, what we've done is we've actually structured pretty focus into three tiers. So you can choose the best one to that fits your, your needs and your time commitment. So tier one is for photography only. Um, this is for somebody who maybe um, already has a blog. Maybe you're a blogger yourself and you want to just take better photos for your for your blog. Or maybe you already work for a specific blogger and you don't need the business side. Obviously, you already have a client and you don't need um, a whole group of clients. You already have one. And so we have a couple of bloggers who have actually put their, their photographers through Pretty Focus. And so they'll just get, they'll just enroll them in tier one. Tier two is the photography and business side. So this is for those who, um, who feel like they have a really good grasp of photography and of food photography, and they don't need the coaching um, in the, in the feedback from the Facebook group. So you can absolutely jump into uh, tier two and, and not have to go through the portfolio review and all those practice sessions. Um, you know, maybe you already know where to work for clients. And so you don't need the, the buyer's club tier two would be for you. And then tier three is, um, is everything, the whole kit and caboodle. It's the photography, the business, the coaching and the buyer's club. So in tier three, that's where you would get, um, you'd go through the training, you would go through the coaching, you'd go through the portfolio portfolio review. And then once you pass that, then you'd go into our buyer's club where you saw people were getting clients within minutes. Um, so I think Andrea, one of our most recent grads, I think within like 20 minutes, she had a couple of people reaching out to her, which is incredible. Um, so this happens very quickly. So whenever you graduate, you've got to be ready. <laughs> That's what we encourage, like get your business set up while you're like the portfolio, while your stuff is being reviewed. Um, get it set up because as soon as you post in there, you're going to get your clients ASAP. So we also, um, we, we want everybody to know that we offer a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you get, if you enroll into the course and you start going through the content and you feel like it's not for you, it's not the right time for you, then, um, you can always email us and get that 30 day money back guarantee. So I um, love this story, um, this success story, and um, just how much value is from it. And I, I'd love for you to speak to it, Melody, because oh, yeah. I think um, oh, so cool yes. to see. Yes. yes, I can speak to this. Yes. Um, so I love that this student, she um, sold a as you can tell, exclusive three recipe lemon dessert bundle. You guys, she made lemon curd, lemon cupcakes, and lemon buttercream for $995. And I have to think back to 2008. Oh, Lord, it just keeps getting further and further <laughs> back there. When I graduated from Northern Arizona University, with a whole lot of debt and a job that paid $30,000 a year and how long it took me to pay back that investment. I would, I, it just, it blows my mind that I would love to, I would love to have had this type of return on, on investment wow. with my, with my college degree. Um, I think that two of these and the course is paid for, right? The yeah. Done, yeah. And paid for. Yeah. 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 Can you imagine a job or a yeah. world where you worked two months or I don't know, two weeks really in two your weeks. college. Yeah. Yeah. Love and actually it. it could be a week it, because it, it, it could be 45 minutes. Yeah. 
it's been done. Yeah. Um, so I just think that that's so powerful. When you look at that investment, you look at those tiers and you're like, Ooh, I see that 1997. Um, but I just, I just hope you guys also see the power of the, um, the return on investment that, that you're getting. It's very, very quick, um, that our students are able to pay it off and then become profitable extremely quickly. Um, it's actually, so it is usually 1997 full price or there is a payment plan, but mm -hmm. we are offering, <laughs> but wait, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually, I think it's the next seven days and hopefully um, we can get clarification on that. Um, we're offering a 10% discount, which I don't mm -hmm. even know if we've done that since we've had tiers off of any of those tiers and mm -hmm. any of the payment plans. Um, and the code is teachable 10. And so if you click on the link in, um, in the, in the either in the description or in the comments, it'll take you right to tier three. Um, and if you go through our teachable school, you can apply this code to, um, any of the tiers. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and we'd love to have you. And we'd also love to have, answer any questions that people might have. We do have some common ones um, that people always um, want to know if um, we wanted to um, go over some of those as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if uh, Ashley wants to come back in. Yeah. Okay. Hey. So I should stop sharing. Hello. Uh, I can pull this oh, down perfect. for you here. Um, thank you all so much. I want to, I'm typing this here, but also want to just re-invite um, the audience to share any any questions that you might have for Melody or Stephanie. And I actually am curious to know from you all, how is this content kind of resonating with you? Have you Has it sparked any ideas for where you want to take your, um, like your current photography or blog approach to what you and what you'd like to do next with it because I'm you know I don't have experience blogging or with food photography but I'm I'm just I'm absorbing all of what you all are saying and in addition to uh like really craving a meatball sub but now I <laughs> am also <laughs> yeah. I, I'm I'm also just thinking like <clears throat> there's so much more potential for collaboration than what I'd realized in the space of like blogging and, and content creation. Um, I think my, my mentality had always kind of been, Oh, it's, it's so much to take on and I wouldn't want to put anything out there. That's not really great. And I'm not so great at X, Y, or Z things. But what I love about what you all are doing is this kind of your, your, peeling back the curtain on a way for this to be a less solitary endeavor and a more collaborative, like even just the partnership that you all have developed. Um, I'm wondering if based on what you know, is, the, is, is this kind of arrangement common in the blogging and food photography world mm -hmm. or do you yeah. encounter folks like trying to do it all on their own a lot of times? Yeah. So it was, I started, um, when I started 11 years ago, I started as a entertaining blogger. So I, mm. or like a party blogger. So I, I blogged a lot of like children's parties and entertaining and recipes were part of it in that niche, niche or niche. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> um, it's very common to hire photographers, like yeah. to hire out. As I moved more into food, it was very uncommon. Like food bloggers um, did everything, right? Yeah, like going it alone. Um, but I think what's happened is there, it's not possible anymore, right? <laughs> so you've got to hire, there's just too much to do um, with between social media and the technical aspects of blogging and writing and promotion and everything else that goes into blogging, it's not possible to operate at a high level and do it all and not burn out. Right. And so what a lot of bloggers are doing are looking at, Melody, what do you call it? Your best use? Best. Oh, why'd you ask me? I know. Your you greatest have... area of contribution. Thank you. So yeah. there's looking at their greatest area of contribution. For someone like me, it's not photography. And, right. you know, you think like before Instagram and Pinterest, the level of photography on the internet was so much 
less right yeah. than mm -hmm. what it is now and so um it's 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 a job that's easy for people to who who maybe don't have the time or the skill or the natural talent to do it it's, it's a great way to give that away i love all the other aspects of blogging more than i love the photography part so well and for stephanie me, right? your your degree was in marketing yeah and, and so just, yeah i'm not it, it's just there there are things i love more and so i think yeah. it's more and more common as as blogging becomes a profession like that you know there's always the meme of like the food blogger like who you know, instead of giving you a lasagna recipe, he talks about their uncle from Sicily. <laughs> and they like, you know, trampled the tomatoes and then they're like, just yes. give me the recipe. Like those, yeah. that's, those days of food blogging are gone, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Or, or that's like a very small portion. So I think it's just changed so much. It's becoming more and more common. And I like to think we're part of it and that we're actually able to offer the community people who are trained that they can trust. And so it has changed a lot. I think the other thing is there are so many people who start blogging um, as like an income, like, a you know, because we mm -hmm. see a million of those courses out there, like earn money from home as a blogger. The reality is, unless you treat it like two full time jobs, your first year or two, um, it's going to take several years before you see one dollar from blogging, mm -hmm. right? right? Like, especially right. Um, if you treat it as full two full time jobs, six months, maybe. Here we're saying get through the training. There's going to be clients waiting for you, and so we've right. seen a lot of people who started blogs jump to the side and say, like, actually, what I just needed to do was make money, and I wanted to do it as a creative job, and this just makes yep. so much more sense. Mm -hmm. And maybe once their financial needs are more stable, then they go back to their blogs or mm -hmm. try to them at the same time. So yeah, both, yeah, yeah. And then we see photographers jumping the other side and like they, yeah. they start their own blog. So we they see that. What it, so what we it see, takes then, right? Yeah, yeah. we yeah. see that yeah. mix of both. But, you know, yeah. Stephanie talked about like you, you hear the stories. Um, and so people are like, oh, they're so over it. And I'm like, oh, people, if you only knew. So right now, um, something tre like trending, of course, there's always trends, right? In the blogging world is, I'm so sorry if you hear the door slamming. Um, is the, is bloggers are now writing for expert advice. So they're pushing out like the stories. They might have a couple of like relatable things in there because people want to be relatable. Um, but they're really breaking down how to make that recipe. Yeah. The ingredients you need and they'll go into detail. Do you know, do I need, um, can I? All the questions. Well, vanilla can, substitution, right? Can yes. I regular vanilla. Can I use? I don't have bourbon right? vanilla. <laughs> I don't have bourbon oh, yeah. vanilla. <laughs> yeah. Or can I? Can I throw in bourbon? Sure. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah just, be more more likely on, on my side. But, yeah. yeah just make, dump the whole bottle. <laughs> <laughs> um, so so then with that, because bloggers are moving in that direction or they're not moving, they are there, they're going in that direction. They're like, they've hit the highway. They're writing for expert advice. The photography at, at Pretty Focus, we're teaching people to photograph for expert advice. So we're showing you right. how to do an ingredient shot, um, laying out all of your ingredients, making sure you leave room so bloggers can write in labels. If you guys, I know Ashley put the link to Stephanie's blog in there, you're going to see some really great examples of those ingredient shots with, with the labels on there. It just helps people know right away, the very first photo, do I have the ingredients? Do I right, you know, have right. what it takes to make this? And then we are walking you through the step-by-step -step of, of what the batter is supposed to look like. Yeah. Because yeah. how many times have you been making that homemade caramel and you're like, what is it? When is it done? Is what is it supposed right? to look like know. when it's done? Yeah. yeah. You're so, so, I, I so appreciate yeah. that. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No. Yeah, no, no, no. You're fine. So that's what our goal is at Pretty Focus. That's the strategy we're talking about is coming alongside the bloggers who are writing for expert advice and photographing for expert advice. And when you marry those two together and you put them together, you have a really, I think, a really uh, successful blog post, right? Yeah. So, yeah. 
I so appreciate that. As you know, we we talk a lot uh, during these events about understanding, like no matter what creative field you're in. And just in the past couple of weeks, I, I've hosted um, events like this with animation artists and mm. marketing strategists and um, you know, folks who focus on jarring their own food, like, like whatever, whatever your endeavor is, there is an element of understanding what your audience really needs and what I so and, and, and serving that, that mm -hmm. need and all of the creators in all of the fields who are finding success in sharing content, like the, like what you all are doing, which is, you know, staying on on top of the trends i i am not a blogger or a, i'm like sometimes mm -hmm. i look for recipes and i cook them and you're you're absolutely right melody i'm not like if it's a story about grandpa snapping the grapes i'm like i don't and then i and then i get takeout but if it's like okay here are the ingredients i then i i i love that like it feels really good as an audience member to to see, yes. oh, okay, I can just tell right away, like, can I do this or what do I need? Um, and, and it's, to me, that's like a tremendous value if you are somebody who is trying to figure out how to get into this business, like, why take on uh, the added weight of having to stay on top of trends that are changing and evolving while you're also kind of trying to produce content when you have this kind of ready-made community here, which I love, you know, just being able to stay connected with the other mm -hmm. photographers and bloggers that you all have as part of your, your student team, um, which feels really cool. I love this, this structure that you all have. Yeah. We, yeah. so part of the reason that I was so gung ho about creating pretty focused is selfish. And that's because I needed <laughs> oh, and so, if you need it, somebody else needs it too. And oh, yeah, and yeah. everyone I knew needed them. And, no. um, but what happens is as things change, I say to melody, like when ingredients shots or just adding more, you know, whatever happens, I tell melody, this is happening. And then, the training gets updated, right? Because right, it's, right. it's because I'm like, I'm, I'm not a professional course creator, right? Like right, this is, right. this is part of our business and serving our, the blogging community too, that it's, it's, we're like, if something's changing in the blogging community, it gets adapted into the course immediately or right. you know, as, as appropriately. And then all of our students always get that. It's a benefit so, from that. Yeah. Too. So it's, yeah. it's a, like a living course that um, once you're in, you're in. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. yeah. A living course and, and like a dynamic community, which yeah. is, I mean, you know, so, so much of, of what we encounter here in, in the creator world is hunger for the things that you miss out on when you're in maybe a more traditional office setting yeah. where you have access to trainings and professional development and there are conferences where right like yeah. you need to kind of build that community for your for yourself and find where the other folks are who are doing what you're doing um, and you all are are giving access to that which is mm -hmm. terrific well we you know our our little tagline is th that we teach women to master food photography and create thriving businesses. And so everything we do goes back to helping them to create thriving businesses. And so yeah. we've got to stay on top of that, on top right. of the trends, because, you know, that's the, I mean, we, we want to stay relevant, but we also want our students to have thriving businesses. And if we're not providing them with relevant content and, you know, giving them that new content, they can't do that. And so right. we're trying to do a lot of that work for them and then just communicate down. And then in turn, those, the photographers who are learning how to, to photograph for bloggers are helping the blogger create their own thriving business. So it just is like this, this cycle Virtuous of, of people helping, yeah, people helping each other build their own thriving businesses and living the life they want, they want at home. Great. So uh well, yeah. kudos to you all. Thank you so much for uh, for sharing this wisdom with us today and for kind of giving us a peek behind the curtain of how Pretty Focused has uh, built this community and, and how you are kind of creating 
spaces for especially women to build and sustain and scale their their businesses. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a great a, a great peek into that community. Um, for our audience, the link to the full course is pinned to the top of the YouTube page, and I'm dropping it in the comments here one more time. Uh, like I mentioned at the top of the event, there will be a replay available. So everyone who registered for the event, you'll be able to access this uh, this session indefinitely and um, will definitely want you to take advantage of the amazing offer that Melody and Stephanie have have listed here today. So check out the website. Um, I was kind of, I got distracted because I was checking out spaceships and laser beams, <laughs> Stephanie. <laughs> it's just, I mean, there's, it's, it's just, it's so pleasant to, to look through even, uh, you know, even if I'm, uh, you know, like not ready to jump into the yeah. kitchen. There's, it's just lovely to, to look at. Uh, so thanks for sharing that. Um, and in the meantime, hope you all have a great rest of your day. Let us know how your food photography business ends up turning out. We are always excited to hear stories from, from guests of, or audience members of live events and, and to hear, and, and the stories that you all shared, like the, lemon the lemon triumvirate package there was a a really a really really great one so here's to all of you having your own version of that story Uh, melody stephanie thank you so much for joining us and we will see you next time thank you thank you yeah take care everyone bye